it is time, finally, I've been waiting for this for quite some time, very eagerly, Terra Invicta is now available in early access. A while ago we played the demo on the channel, and there was a lot of support on that, a lot of people interested in it, and so am I, and here we go. Um, training wheels are off, early access, we can now pick all of the different playable factions, and we can actually finally save and load the game so I don't have to play it all in one session. So we can start getting um, a full, detailed, considered playthrough. I'm really excited. Um, looks like mods will be available. Um, looks like we've already got some available in the workshop, so that's exciting. So this is launch day of early access to Tyrion Victor. We're on version 0.3.15. And let's start a new game. Now I've been thinking about this and I'm wondering which uh, faction we want to be. Um, I definitely want to start in the full solar system. Modern scenario, we're going to go for the full, the full experience. So in the demo we were playing the resistance and I played that a number of times. So I'm happy to change to something else. So the resistance was the one that protects humanity by resisting the alien invasion. We've got humanity first, who wants to eradicate the aliens and all who support them. So they are extremely, extremely aggressive. We've got the initiative, who want to exploit the alien arrival to gain power. We've got the servants, who want to support the aliens by any means necessary. And it says they're easier. Interesting. They were the main uh, enemy we were playing against uh, in the demo. Um, the Protectorate wants to protect humanity by appeasing the aliens. We've got the Academy, who wants to convince the aliens that we are equals. Interesting. That's not what I imagined they were, but uh, I thought they wanted to um, steal their technology, but that's an interesting one. It says difficult, but that sounds fun. And then Project Exodus wants to escape the aliens by sending humans to other stars. Now I'm kind of tempted to do Project Exodus or the Academy. Both of them seem to be a lot about getting your tech up. And um, at this point, I'm not sure if we want to do the, the equals with aliens. Project Exodus sounds a lot of fun. Um, it's not exactly what I'd advocate for, but I do advocate for sending humans out to other stars. So... It might be kind of cool to go for that. I think let's do that. Let's do Project Exodus. Escape the aliens by sending humans to other stars. You can also customize your faction. Um, so you can say your display name, Project Exodus, uh, the leader title, director, fleet names, echo, whatever. Um, start in 2022. Full solar system, all eight factions, Project Exodus start the game. We've got some new title screen stuff here. That's exciting. Yeah, so our aim will be to build the most high-tech stuff we can get. Expand our space technology and get the hell out of the solar system. I have no idea how it's going to play because the resistance was all about fighting the aliens. This will be about escaping the aliens now, so it's going to be kind of interesting. Remember the day the stars answered, the day we learned we were not alone. As a familiar sun rose on an unfamiliar universe, some of us saw wondrous possibility and others existential danger. The astronomers had insisted that the bright streak in the sky was no natural phenomenon. Most of us didn't really believe them until it burned through our atmosphere and crashed in a remote region, leaving only wreckage and uncertainty. Our ignorance we fractured, taking refuge in our most primal emotions. Each of us saw what we wanted to see. It is disconcerting at first to awaken to an unfamiliar home, to open your eyes and see that everything you knew has changed forever. But unease has long been the price of wisdom. There comes a time when we must accept change, no matter how great. There comes a time when we must all leave home. I love it. They've got some voice acting now.
and we've got the UFO crashdown in Iran. We have got access to Chagong Station. We've got two chances, one in America and I think one in India. And um, an alien vessel has crashed down in the Tehran region of Iran. But the wreckage is unrecoverable, we suspect. An alien life form escaped into the surrounding countryside. Take me there. Greetings, Director. The Council has appointed you leader of our organization. I am Khalid Alashgar, your deputy administrator. The alien crash landing represents both great opportunity and great danger. As such, we have formed a small group drawn from those with particular expertise in astrophysics, intelligence analysis, and space exploration. We must learn what these creatures are, where they came from, and what they plan to do on Earth. So, they recommend we send a counselor to investigate the crash site in Tehran as soon as possible. And using our other counsellors to gain influence in nations that may be able to contribute resources to our cause. Let's investigate the alien crash. First contact came with an alien spacecraft error braked in, in our upper atmosphere before crashing down in a remote territory and apparently self-destructing. The remains of that spacecraft could potentially advance human spacecraft human spaceflight capabilities by centuries. We should send a counselor to the site immediately. So we can see all of our objectives, uh, investigate the alien crash, control Earth's nations, industrialize space, and build up our council. It looks like we might be going for a little bit of a Middle Eastern uh, theme playthrough, just because the um, we've got a crash in Tehran, and our um, Project Exodus assistant director, whatever, got that theme to them. So let's let's do that. Let's let's go for Middle East. Uh, in the demo, I did a lot of things where we were doing controlling um, Europe and expanding around there. But uh, we're not as constrained by time now, so maybe we we go for this. Those of you who haven't watched the the demo playthrough information, what we do, well, what we've got is we've got counselors who are basically like your agents who do stuff in the world. You see over here, we've got. Thomas over here is a diplomat. We've got Van Gish over here, who is a kingpin. Um, so that means they're also a bit of a criminal, so they gives them access to other things. I just want to see if anything immediately apparent as different. This command point thing over here, I feel like that has changed a bit, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, resources. 30th of September 2022. Jeez. Are we in next week already? So if we go to the solar system view, we can see everything out here. We've got a really complete, awesome solar system full of stuff to exploit. We've got our council. We've got our two people over here. We can actually recruit more. Might not be a bad idea to do that. And um, you can see our counselors, we've got different stats. We've got perception, um, investigation, espionage, command, administration, science, security, and apparent loyalty. To actually know their real loyalty, you need to do some investigations on them. And based on their backgrounds and stuff, they get a bunch of different um, missions that they're able to do. And they all have different traits. We'll go into more detail later. So we can actually recruit. You just see it has a cost in influence and we don't have enough for anyone at the moment you can see a whole list of all the nations of earth all their resources and tech levels and all that we've got a list of all space habitats at the moment we've got the international space station and Tiagong station we can build spaceships later on we've got research and development and you can see at the moment we've got we are not alone skywatch and missions to space for the global research and then we've got our own research over here which we'll get into later uh, we've got intel where you can see all about what we know about the different factions the aliens themselves the state of the world we've got the russia ukraine war currently happening and uh, public opinion around the world 50 percent of the world is undecided a lot of people are supporting the Academy at the moment. I'm going to have to get used to that because they're uh, playing the demo, so used to the resistance. Now we can look at the solar system and all the different um, bodies and their re uh, resources and stuff, so that's really cool. Um, and the transfer planner, when we start doing spaceships, it's going to be a lot of fun. 
Um, so we need to go advance time just a little bit so we can get into the next phase of the game. Here we go. One day later. One guy is saying let's um, capture Russia because they've got good boost. And boost is, um, you know, it's a spacecraft boost to get into orbit. And uh, not a bad idea to go for Russia because it's got some of the highest, as well as America. So let's take our diplomat dude and say investigate alien activity in Tehran. Cost five ops. I'm here. And then this dude, we can say go control a control point in a nation. So every nation has a bunch of control points based uh, on their GDP. And we can click on them. You can see uh, Russia, we've only got a 3% chance to capture that control point. So we might actually want to go for others. We look, we can see over here. Baghdad, we've got a 73% chance. But you don't just want to capture every nation. You want to look at what you would get out of it. So if we click on that, um, you see they don't have any boost. What we really want to do is get boost because we want to get some space flight. So maybe you want to look at India. They've got 0 0.1, which is not particularly high. Japan has 0 0.4. China has 1.2. Russia has 2.5 in the greater Eurasian region. So that's um, Russia, Kazakhstan. Actually, a lot of it is in Kazakhstan itself. So maybe we should go for Kazakhstan first. Um, that's Baikonur. We look at the United States, we've got 2.3 over there. So actually, Baikonur gives a little bit more boost than America itself. Um, we can actually see all of this if we just go look at our um, nations list. We can say sort by this. Kazakhstan, France, United States, China, Japan, all good options. Um, China, from experience from the demo, is extremely hard to capture. United States, close behind that, very hard. So let's do this. We're going to say send to Kazakhstan to control a nation. Um, and basically, based on the amount of control points, you get a share in the resources. Um, and then the last control point, you get control over that nation. You can also spend additional influence to increase your success or well, chance of success in a mission. So if we spend four, we get a 66% 66 chance to get that. So I'm going to do that. Taking control. Um, and then we can say confirm assignments. And now we're going to investigate this crash site. I don't remember exactly how long each of these phases lasts. Um, but speed up time a little bit and go to the next um, action phase. Unfortunately, the hopeful show of international unity did not materialize, with China, Russia, and the United States accusing each other of hiding knowledge about the alien crash and preventing full access to the site. We have an opportunity to shape events to our advantage, even make our case directly to the nations of the world. However, with the eyes of the world on these meetings, a counselor's risk of exposure to our enemies is extremely high. Remain in the shadows, nothing happens. Quietly steer support to Project Exodus, gain 25 influence, grant a small public opinion boost around the world, information will be exposed to our enemies, or deliver our manifesto to the entire world. Grant a public opinion boost around the world, uh, and a great deal of information will be exposed, and that's 50 influence. I feel like Exodus, you want to keep it a secret that you're building a giant spaceship, don't you? Um, either we remain in the shadows or we quietly steal, uh, steal support. Since we actually currently got an income of 23 influence, 25 influence doesn't seem that great. So I think let's remain in the shadows. Does mean we lose a little bit of that opinion boost. Um, but I think that's a good idea. Select the management team. We may now recruit our faction's management team. As we stand up Project Exodus operations, we are selecting our internal management team 
to help oversee our affairs. While we are gathering personnel from a variety of disciplines, at your direction we would emphasize a particular speciality. Do we go for lobbyists and influencers? Our monthly influence income increases by three. Go for scientists and engineers. Our monthly research income is increased by 15. Officers and operators, our ops income increases by three. And financiers and investors, our monthly income increases by 10. So you can see at the moment we've got a shortfall, not an income. Um, so we've got six expense per month. We've got uh, 23 income of influence, plus one ops income, zero boost. We've got one control, uh, mission control available. And we are generating 32 science per month. And I feel since we're doing Project Exodus, we really should be going for scientists and engineers. And I see they've got a little circle around here. I don't know if I noticed that in the demo, but a progress thing. And we do have achievements. I've unlocked Weather Balloon. Actually, I haven't looked at that. Um, we've got 90 achievements. We've currently got Eyes of the World Upon You, Start Your First Campaign, and Weather Balloon, Investigate Nailing Crash Site. Um, end game, learn your factory's, faction's victory conditions. They weren't victory conditions in the demo, so that's nice. And um, I'm not going to look too in depth at these, but it uh, looks interesting. We've got 11 hidden ones as well. In fact, let's just do a quick search. So, to boldly go, winners Project Exodus, actually, that feels pretty good. So there's only one specific Exodus achievement, it seems. Um, all right, so. Investigate alien activity mission is complete. We've learned some useful information, and um, prepping for next mission. We've completed the objective that gives us some influence and science, and we can now start investigating the debris. Okay, so that's given us a new project. We're now able to undertake the alien signatures project. Uh, it allows us to detect alien abductions on Earth, so we can replace our current research, which is just a generic one with the alien signatures. So currently we're doing um, audience research, which gives us influence. We get commercial research, management research, and operations research, which are just generic repeatable ones that gives, uh, uh, give us bonus um, resources. These ones will give us our new tech. We can actually look at our tech tree over here and see. I wonder if new things have been added to the game and uh, does look like there might be a few new things from the demo in here, which is exciting. Look at all these different types of reactor techs and theoretical armaments and oof, beautiful. So we want to change alien signatures, select the project, and it will finish in just a few days. The growing realization that we are not the sole sapient species in the universe is causing many to see their fellow humans in a new light, leading to hopes that we can overcome our capacity for strife, to address the alien arrival as one people. Let us try and set aside our differences and go forward together. All, alien, uh, all nations gain plus one cohesion, and a new event, Wave of Fear, is unlocked. We failed to take control. Okay, we didn't capture... Kazakhstan, we can try again. So I'm going to say repeat mission. And they'll do that next time. Got the new phase, so it looks like it's weak phases at the moment. And now this guy's saying we've got supporters in Portugal. Maybe it's a good place to look at. Um, so we can look at our nations list over here and we can see uh, who supports us, really. Uh, Portugal is actually the highest. 31%, and based on the percentage of support, um, that's how difficult your operations will be there as well. So like our Kazakhstan thing could perhaps be made easier if we had more support there, stuff like that. So getting a nation in the European Union would not be a bad idea, because you can unify them into one sort of cohesive state where you don't actually have to have a million control points, because we can only control a limited amount of control points before we get a very excessive um, cost in prestige, I mean influence. So maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to start with getting going for Portugal and um, expanding, you know, through Spain, France, and whatever, 
and forming the EU and merging that way. Um, because one benefit is if you control a nation, the adjoining nations, you get a little bonus to uh, capturing them as well. So it does make it a little bit easier in that way. And since this is, yeah, you see, we've got a 79% chance of success in capping Portugal. Adding in one influence puts it up to 84, two puts us up to 87. So we should have a fairly high chance of getting it. And what we can also do is capture just single control points um, or just leave one control, the, the final control point available because you can only capture that final control point if you control control points in that nation. So you can sort of block other um, factions out from controlling them Establishing our presence. that way. So it is something that you have to be strategic about. You've got to maintain uh, your control point cap. Put in a few more points. Putting our people in place. Let's quickly, we've got 62 influence at the moment. We can go look at our council and we can perhaps recruit another one. So these are all the people we can look at getting. And you'll see they've all got different stats and different roles that they've had in their lives. You've got an executive, a fixer, a rebel, a diplomat, activist, evangelist, and a diplomat again. So we had a, a diplomat and a kingpin. Perhaps we want to look at a, someone with another set of skills. So an executive is business focused, and since we are running into a cash reserve deficit, perhaps going for a uh, a rich person would not be a bad idea. Uh, an executive over here is leader in government and business, may not have a high public opinion uh, or public profile, but you're good at getting things done. See, this one is an oligarch, gives income and uh, of cash and influence, but you see it also affects their persuasion in nations with um, different levels of inequality. So all these different um, traits that people have will affect how they perform in different places. A fixer is um, some sort of, you know, does things on the down low. You see he's more of a streetwise kind of person. Got a rebel, someone who's willing to take violent action. You see they've got the enemy of the state trait over here which means um, they can't do missions in their home nation so he can't do stuff in Bindhuk in Namibia. Um, diplomats, seen them before, an activist, uh, social change and persuasion rather than violence, fame which gives a lot of influence but um, less espionage so they'll probably be more likely to be um, discovered. So I kind of like the idea of an executive mainly because we really need money. Um, we will get money by capturing nations and stuff, but it's good to have It's good to have more. <laughs> um, this person is an addict, so that reduces their income. They're wealthy, oligarchs. Interesting that they don't cancel each other out. Um, member of government, so having that trait allows them to have access to different organizations. We'll look at organizations later. But they are earthbound, which means they can't can't leave the planet. But that's not going to be an issue for quite some time. So just with this one person, we can solve our money woes. And I think that's not the worst idea. They don't have a massive set of available missions. You'll look at some of these other ones have a lot. But they do have control nations and crackdowns, uh, which are extremely important. Um, having someone with crackdowns is great. And a hostile takeover lets you steal an organization from someone. So I think we're going to recruit Leji over here from Indonesia. I, I'm going to mispronounce tons of names, but uh, so we're going to recruit you. And uh, probably the next one we want to get might be like a scientist or something. We'll get a, a new set of people available in the future. Thank you for bringing them. No problem. See, now we've got a plus one uh, cash income. So that's great. I do think this progress bar thing is new. I don't remember it being in the demo, but either way, that's great. I'm glad to have that there. We were unable to establish control. We weren't able to get Portugal. Okay. Um, we'll try again. We are taking over. Critical success control nation in Kazakhstan. Public opinion has shifted plus three in our favor. We now have one or two control points. 
Excellent. Fantastic. Critical success, I think, um, if you get a roll over uh, or, or a certain value that you'll get a critical chance. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it's sort of like dice rolls in D&D, you know, rolling a 20 gets you something. Um, so that's great. Now we can look at Kazakhstan over here. Because we control one of these control points, we are getting 0 0.015 boost. <laughs> we can get more by capturing the full um, country. You see over here it says, under normal circumstances may only be targeted for control by a faction with at least one control point in the nation. And since we've got, we have a control point, no one else can get Kazakhstan. But we do want to get boost. Um, whether we want to capture the whole nation now, I'm not sure. I think it might be a good idea because it is one of the biggest boost nations in the world. And you see, we also get a bunch of other things over here. We've got investment points, which are basically points that we can then spend to distribute to other priorities in the nation. So we can say, let's put more money into uh, the economy or more boost points or the army or whatever. And since we are playing as Exodus, the default points priority thing will be escape, um, which seems to put a lot of priority into funding, boost and mission control which makes a lot of sense. Also money into knowledge. Depending on what else we wanted to do, you could also put money into unity, military. We don't really want to do war on Earth, so we don't kind of focus on building up armies and stuff. Let's try again in Portugal. We'll spend a couple of points on that. Establishing control. Standing now by for orders. we can attempt to get another control point in Kazakhstan, but you see, since we need to invest so much um, influence into it, it might not be worth it at the moment. Um, and you'll see he's saying now our control point would be better protected with a defend interests mission. So what that does is basically the it puts it, it puts a shield over it, uh, which protects you, makes enemy enemy actions against you harder to perform. He's unable to doesn't actually look like we I don't know why we can't actually perform that at the moment. Um if we can look at other nations and see yeah, at the moment it's defaulting to just our controlled ones, and we can say show all. So Peru, Iraq, Italy, Romania, and Czech Republic are European Union ones with high-ish values for us, but not very high. You can see over there the Academy has a very high chance in Italy. Um, you can see the highest one for a nation over there. And Romania and Czech Republic might be targets for us. France is getting capped up quickly by the resistance. So I think what we should do is perhaps get one of these people and see what missions they've got available. Ready. So we've got the crackdown available, which basically um, reduces the defenses of an enemy control point, allowing us to easily take over. And purge basically takes control from an enemy's control point to our own. Um, we don't seem to have... At your service. These are the ones who have, let's see. We don't actually have someone who has the ability to improve relations. That's actually not good. What's the op? Improving relations is very powerful. Um, well, okay then. So we just need to either Go in ourselves. We've got a high chance in Iraq, round about where all the alien activities started. Might not be a bad idea to uh, get up in there, like we said. We'll be running this place in no time. Ready to go. Fairly high percent chance in Mongolia, but we don't get much out of that. Um, but it might give us easy chance to get both Russia and China. We really want to focus on countries of value, you know, for our resources that we need. Turkmenistan has high chance, but it doesn't have much available to us. Like if we looked at France, you'd see we get a lot of money, income, and stuff like that. We need to do something like a crackdown and say, hey, let's steal this one from France, but 1% chance is not worth it. 
look at places like Egypt, but it's zero percent because these things are pretty strong because they're just getting kept up now. It might be a good idea to go for Belarus because on Russia's edge there and the European Union give this benefit to this whole surrounding region. It doesn't have a massive bonus in other things, but it's one of the highest European regions for um, liking us at the moment. So let's do that. Bringing them on board. We haven't actually talked about this. We've got Tiago on station over here. Um, so we've got space stations which give us um, access to stuff. At the moment, this is costing us water and volatiles, which basically means it's costing um, boost for us because uh, it's consuming resources we need to send it up to keep the people alive in there. At the moment, there's really not much on the station. You can see the International Space Station gives a lot of other benefits and costs to them. That's because they've got some other modules on there, but we can't afford to build anything there at the moment. But it basically gives you, um, based on the different labs and stuff that you have there, different um, bonuses to research or things on Earth, stuff like that. Our presence is growing. Okay, we got the one point in Portugal. That's fantastic. So that's giving us a bit of money um, and points in investment that we can control. We have gained significant support. And Iraq. Cool. We're taking over. Oh, we got Belarus as well. Um, our counselor was, however, spotted in Minsk. So that means uh, they can now be targets for investigation or attacks, but we can get them, you know, to go to ground or go somewhere else and stuff like that. If they're too exposed, then the, the enemy counselors can do missions on them, maybe turn them over, you know, double agents and stuff like that. We've got it now a control point cost of 28 or 27.9453 over there. Um, basically, that's the value of all the control points. And that's sort of, you know, a score based on um, the GDP and whatever with the different nations, what the control points cost you. So it is something you really have to manage. We're already, you know, about a quarter of the way used up there. Project is complete. We have completed the Alien Signatures project. There is no doubt. Extraterrestrial life has touched down on Earth. The many questions we have regarding its origin, its species, and its intent will have to wait. All that matters now is finding it. By cross-referencing reports of unusual events in the vicinity of the landing site, with similar data from our global intelligence network, we have developed a tracking system able to reliably identify disappearances most likely resulting from alien activity. This allows us to detect alien abductions on Earth. Uh, unfortunately, the samples we acquired were too small and limited to give us any real understanding of the alien spacecraft, though it has left us with some tantalizing clues. In other news, an alien survived the crash and has moved into the nearby wilderness territory, oddly receiving reports of disappearances in the nearby communities. As yet, we have no explanation as to why. Um, so now, the next objective will be doing an uh, investigation of alien abdu uh, abduction claims. Whether they're real, local superstitions, or media hysteria, um, it is becoming disturbing. So we need to do surveil location missions in nearby alien crash sites um, and see alien activity there. We want to get the alien origin research done. We need Skywatch and Deep System Skywatch global technologies um, to do that. That will allow us then to see the whole solar system and find where they came from. Our analysis of the alien debris, though limited, has produced fascinating results. While a minority of the debris is unidentifiable and may well have come from extrasolar source, the majority of the material is comprised of elements that appear to have been extracted from distant bodies within our own solar system. Evidence suggests that this ship was assembled within Sol's orbit. We should make it priority to investigate further. Another objective we've got now is to salvage alien technology. Whatever path we choose, we will need a better understanding of the alien's technology. Unfortunately, it does not appear as though the aliens will be willing to hand over a working sample. It appears that our only option is to take one by force. Successfully engage one of the following alien assets. A facility, a landed UFO, orbital habitat, a warship or army, and research the alien technology project when it becomes available. Now that's going to be interesting. 
So we can do some research. This is a fairly expensive research, um, the management research, and it will reduce the cost of um, influence or our capacity for managing control points. So it might be worth it. We've already got points into audience research, so let's get that for now. Uh, and what we can do is we can also, I didn't talk about this, we can put our, our science into the global research pool as well. And if we put the most research into something, then we can choose which one, uh, what tech to research next. So we should have actually started that earlier. Uh, I forgot to do that. Um, but um, yeah, people who spend the most get to choose what's next. And um, it's actually a pretty important thing to control. It's like you saw some of our own things we're going to need to um, have other people. Unrest is high in Iraq. We might want to consider stabilize. So this guy's got the stabilized mission. So we can go to Iraq and say, hey, everybody chill out. You see, we've, they've got a guerrilla war going over there. That's not great. Um, so that reduces, you know, economy and it makes it easier for coups to happen. And you can influence that and say, hey, um, let's start a coup in some other country and perhaps get control of their control points. Restoring order. Ready to go. And you can also do increase unrest missions. Baltic states. Um, seems like we're going to go for a Eastern European, Middle Eastern, sort of somewhat European thing at the moment. The Mongolia seems to be increasing as well. There's only one control point there. So if we capture that, that's done. Cost three points. I think let's do it. Bringing them on board. So well, this, soon. this is the person who was discovered. So we can tell them to go to ground and uh, be less visible. Uh, which might, just for long-term safety, be a good idea. But that means we get a month where we don't get any actions from them. So that's sort of the balance you've got to do is do something or keep them safe. And early in the game, I feel like getting stuff done kind of important. Oh my god, they actually listened. Holy shit. Holy shit. I was, when I was playing the demo, I was like, we should have, a, when you click this drop down, see the actual percentages available for a thing. And they did it. They did it. Our highest chance is in Belize. So we can say, hey, go to Belize and get an 87% chance of doing that. I am so happy with that. Oh my god. No, that's highly unlikely. It wasn't anything to do with what I said, but I. You can see why this is such an improving. You don't have to go looking at the map and seeing all the percentages chance. You can just open the drop down for all the available points and uh, do it. Lovely, 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 lovely. How much does this control point cost? Um, three. You see, that's the problem. Because it's not extremely valuable in the, the resources that we'll get from there, maybe it's not the best idea. So if we look at this, probably, the, yeah, you see the ones that are hardest to get, France, United Kingdom, Germany, Japan, India, United States, China, you know, all the, the massive economies, they're harder to capture. Iceland, and there is a potential for Iceland to join the European Union. I go for Bulgaria just because it's a EU nation over here, so that'll give us more access. Well, we've also got Slovakia, and let's go for Bulgaria. Um, Putting our people there. in place. Also, um, we haven't pointed out, like, on the left-hand side, we can see all the different stuff that's happening. Um, we can see that the Academy has gained control with an army of Russia. So they've actually got two control points there already. Jeez. Egypt, the initiative. We can also change our uh, map view over here. So we've just been looking at nations, but we can also look at population. A little heat map of where people live. You can see a, then per capita GDP. Generally, the ones with a higher value for that are ones where you get more from. You can see Ireland actually gets very high per capita GDP. Control points is basically, you know, the number of control points and their value. China is definitely amongst the highest, I think, US and China. The, the hardest ones to capture in the game, but potentially the most valuable to have. Military tech level affects a lot of things, but like the army strength. Boost income is what I was talking about. We need boost to get into orbit. Russia, 
Kazakhstan, China, Japan, France, because France has um, French Guiana over here, and then America, of course, has theirs. But in those others, we've just a little bit, you know, India, but it's generally located in other things. Unrest, we're talking about that, you know, affects GDP and how easy or hard it is to capture or destabilize the nation. And then popularity for different nations uh, or different factions in the world, each of the nations. And then faction control shows you nations that are controlled by different factions. At the moment, only one country is fully controlled, and that is Egypt by the initiative. Um, the rest are, you know, partially controlled or whatever. And terrain map shows you, uh, it'll be basically, you know, the, the, the effects of armies in different areas. I think for the moment, just the general nation map is the easiest to view. Things are stabilizing. So stabilized nation mission success, reduced unrest in Iraq by a little bit. We can tell them to repeat that mission and reduce it even more. I'm not going to tell them immediately, but we might do it next time anyway. Different countries will have a like a resting point for their unrest. So this one is a rest value of 6.3. We have fully controlled uh, Mongolia. You see we've got an achievement because we fully controlled the executive of that nation. So now up. we can control a lot of stuff about uh, Mongolia and we don't have to worry about it for now. Um, you'll see that some of these things are in red, welfare, military, and spoils. Um, we can read the tooltips, but welfare over here, it says, um, it has a warning symbol when inequality is increasing in a nation. And uh, we don't necessarily want inequality, but we also need to think about our own objectives. If we put uh, money that could be go better to other things, you know, or our own goals, you know, maybe it's not the best thing. But is it worth putting all our influence points into a space flight program in Mongolia? when we've got other nations where it might be easier to do so. So we might actually want to then create a custom priority here and say, let's not create a space flight program here right now. It's not going to benefit anything. We could maybe put it into welfare of the people, maybe into the economy, maybe into unity, which is actually really good because unity will increase support for us in that nation. Which is not a bad idea. Military, we don't need to do that. It, it does give a warning if the unrest is increasing, but it is pretty low, so that should be fine. I think it's partly because it just changed ownership, so it's like, whoa. Um, spoils is another inequality thing. It's like the rich people wanting more. Um, and you'll see it also has an effect on global warming, which I'm very excited to see. Um, because in the demo, uh, you only had seven years to see anything and i never even got that far because the game would crash but the effects of global warming will affect nations so i'm keen to see that um, if we look at we can look at global and you can see in the environment we've got temperature anomalies sea level different gases in the atmosphere and um, different things you do will cause an effect on that so very interesting we might you know see long-term effects of global warming on the world and I have no idea how it's going to affect stuff. So it's going to be cool. Our supporters are in place. Cool, we've got a control point in Bulgaria. Okay, we now on the 31st of October. We've basically done a month in the game. So far, no huge revelations. So maybe we want to get people to like us more. So we put a little point in Unity to make people like us a little bit more. Uh, maybe even reduce spoils, but that'll make reach people angry, which does increase the chance for coups, but it gives us points to spend in other stuff. Um, Exodus people would be wanting to support the rich. Uh, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> now, if we look at this me? person, uh, we can actually tell them to go do an assassination mission on um, people, but you see the only other available people are our own, so we don't want to assassinate our people. We can do a surveil location, um, since we did have that in, uh, alien crash. Maybe we could get something out of it, but I think it was a month ago, so maybe it's not worthwhile doing. 
you'll see that um, our different um, counselors have different um, success chances and that's based on their different skills so if we look at this guy his success chances might be very different from this one and it may also depend on different countries based on their traits um, so they might have more success in one place where someone else might not but if we look at russia um, we don't want them to get full control of russia do we? we wanted to get russia so maybe what we should be doing is saying hey let's do a crackdown in russia but unfortunately that costs too much influence um, they are undefended so we could do a purge but the success chance is too low that's because you see their um, public opinion is 77 percent which just means it's, it's just it's just too difficult you get a bonus if you've got support but so that kind of sucks, um, but we do have the area that has the most of it, so maybe it's fine. You can see if we look at China, the size of the, the national economy there is putting a minus 28 debuff into the role there. Um, you get bonus from your persuasion, your popular support, and having control points in neighbors. Um, but yeah, that's not even worth attempting it. If we look at um, Afghanistan over here, the size of the national economy is only a small thing, so gives us a higher chance over there to get in. I think we were going to do the Baltic States at one point, so maybe we look at that. Putting our people in place. Greece has a fairly high chance for us. Also, yeah, well, things are improving. Um, Czech Republic is actually very high for you. Let's just dump all our influence in there. Establishing control. Ready for my mission. All right, let's get Armenia. Why not? Establishing control. Okay, so we may appoint our faction's chief advisors. We have a management team on board. We may now recruit a core group of advisors to assist our interactions and oversight, if nations allowed to our cause. Focus on economic development. Um, investment points we direct the economy priority are increased by ten. Those are those pips, those points that we did. Hire some steely-eyed missile men and women. Um, so that gives investment points bonus to space fight and boost, which is very important, I think. Call in generals, uh, military and build army. I don't think that's going to be a priority ever for us. Welfare and knowledge is also, you know, international aid. Kind of nice, but we are all about rockets. Rockets, rockets, rockets. So steely-eyed missile women and men. That is our focus. We go to space. Our adversaries has, have conducted a crackdown in Kazakhstan. We do not want that. That is bad. That is bad. That means they're going to be targeting us the next turn. So we need to defend that place. Um, unfortunately, None of our counselors have to defend. Well, we'll figure out when we've got the ability next turn. An alien fleet detected. Spellens telescopes have detected a new alien fleet transferring to low Earth orbit. Route to one. It will arrive at Earth 21 November 2022. And you can see it's come from its trajectory somewhere out in the deeper solar system out there. You can see this alien ship over here, a Righteous Fury gunship. We know it uses an alien fusion torch, but we know nothing about its armor or armaments it seems to be a transport weighing about 5,000 tons with a delta v the ability to change velocity of several hundred kilometers per second if you know anything about those values that is extraordinary our best spaceships have you know in the tens and those are you know not multi-thousand ton spaceships you know a couple tons 
Our supporters are in place. Okay, we control one control point in Czech Republic. That's great. Taking over. And we control a control point in the Baltic states. We Exit. were unable to establish control. We weren't able to get Armenia, however. Enemy counselor detected. Uh, we have detected someone in the London region in the United Kingdom. Someone for one of the other secret organizations. We're not sure who they are, however, or which one they are. We just know they're in London. However, I feel like there's a high chance they're part of the humanity first. So we can do a investigate uh, mission over there to figure out more about them. Since we are aware that they exist now, might not hurt to do that. There is the potential later on in the game to turn them to our cause. So maybe we do that. We are playing the long game now, so uh, might be worth it. An undefended enemy control point in Belize is vulnerable to the purge mission. I am more worried about our place in Kazakhstan over there. So we do have a person who can protect a target. Um, so we can protect a region against attacks or operations. So that might be worth doing in Kazakhstan over here. Because there's a high chance that they're going to do something. So I think we're going to do that, and hopefully that protects them next time. So we can look at Crackdowns, Belize, there's a high chance over there. I don't think we really want Belize. Italy is really low chance, so not worth it. Purge missions, a very low chance. I love that they had this there. Oh, I'm so happy about it, because it was, it was a pain point in the demo. Standing by for orders. As we're getting more points in these areas around here, we do have a higher chance because we've got control points in the nations and the federations. So it does help. So we could perhaps get Slovakia now, at least one point in it. 75% chance. Taking control. And you. What's the off? Let's just get Iceland. I love Iceland. Really nice. We'll bring this nation to our side. Stupid reason for doing it, but yeah. We must not only defend human lives from the aliens, we must ensure those lives remain worth living. So, they've got a voice actor for the Resistance now. I'm glad because the demo didn't have one. So we've encountered the Resistance. The leaders of this group are convinced the aliens are a threat to humanity's ability to determine its own future and are quietly preparing to fight. Yeah, if you want to see more about them, you can check out the demo playthrough or I might do other playthroughs in the future. Um, they are here to cleanse our sick world. The aliens are our saviors, and all who oppose them are enemies of the future. And that's the servants. People who don't think humanity is worth anything and want to worship aliens as gods. Yeah, or whatever, or divine origin. Um, anyway, don't like you. Don't like you. So those are the two that we've encountered so far. And uh, we can see more information about what we know about different factions. At the moment, it's not much. Defending the VIP. The trick is not to look directly at what you are trying to see. Offset your focal point somewhere to the side of where you think you notice the movement. At night, the center of your vision doesn't work as well as during the day. I won't try to explain the science to you. What matters is you'll see whatever is out there before they see you. Colonel Hans Castillo, advising conscripts in Colombia. So, a global research has been completed. So this is a shared um, research that every faction will get access to. The thing that I was talking about that we each contribute to. And it seems the Academy has contributed the most and has selected the next thing, Outpost Habs. The span of time humanity has spent in space is dwarfed by the span of time humanity has been interested in it. Earliest records of the telescope date to the turn of the 17th century, with regular advancement made every century thereafter. Therefore follows that on the shoulders of programs such as SETI, we consolidate our resources into a unified observation and surveillance program so we can maintain active, constant surveillance on the nearer parts of the solar system. This allows all factions to track alien vessels and structures that are inside the orbit of Saturn, and immediately reveals all alien vessels and habitats within our detection range. So we can see everything within the orbit of Saturn. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. The next 
thing available after that uh, will be Deep System Skywatch. The Sarathu al Bakr teaches that in the creation of heaven and earth, a wise people may find the signs of Allah. Let us heed those words and join together as we take our search into the stars. Director Khalid al Ashgar from his khutbah at the first conclave of Muslim astrophysicists. And another global research has immediately completed after that. So this was the mission to space. The Academy again contributing the most in a selected orbital shipbuilding for the new direction. So far I'm happy with all these decisions. Um, existing in space is a different animal than merely traversing it. If we plan to go from tourist to resident, we must adapt. Logistics requires resupply missions planned in months in advance, where engineering must cope with long-term exposure to solar radiation and the rigors of equipment maintenance in a vacuum. Likewise, our psychologists must develop a training regime so personnel are able to maintain peak performance in an environment where up and down do not exist. We have, of course, been able to travel in space for some time, but now we must establish how to do so easily, regularly, and cost-effectively, and in a far greater numbers than ever before. This renewed mission to space thus entails a mission to change many of our most fundamental preconceptions, that all of these hardships are entirely necessary, for only once we are comfortably beyond Earth's orbit can we hope to explore, exploit, and ultimately settle upon neighboring worlds, and in time, perhaps far beyond. Gives us access to um, the potential technologies of deep space propulsion, orbital shipbuilding, outpost tabs, and space tourism. Excellent. And with that, our bright future in space. I think I'm going to call that it for the first episode of Terry and Victor playing as Project Exodus. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm really excited to keep playing this game. We just, just scratched the start of this game. We're only two months in. We've got potentially centuries of guiding our new solar and interstellar humanity. Thanks for joining in. And I'll check you next time. Get score. Bye. You can save the game. You can save the game and quit it and play. Yes. <laughs>